Hey brothers and sisters, this is your favorite brother from another mother, Brother Patrick, coming to you from orphanage number one and number two here. Which we have uh, the orphanages in one big compound, one and two. Orphanage number three is in a separate location, which I'll have on this video in a little bit. So I'm at orphanage number one and number two. And uh, here's one of the orphans now passing by. See, I'm going to go over here and videotape the orphans. And I wanted to talk about all the things we need to do in the, the orphanages. Like this. You can see we need to paint these roofs. We need to repair the roof. Get all this fixed. You can see that uh, we don't have any paint there. The light is pretty strong from behind me. So I don't know if you guys can see. But we need to, like around the door here, it needs to be painted. It's, got, it's not going to last as long as it should. There's our water tank. There's one brother that helped pay for that. And I thank the Lord for that because the water supply is only eight hours a day here. So we can fill that up at, during the time the water is running. So they have water 24 hours a day. As you can see here, the roof of this one needs to be painted. And uh, around the window frames. And uh, like this here, you can see this cement on the kitchen. It's not been finished, you know, and it'll it'll deteriorate a lot faster if you don't finish it. So I'd like to do the finish work around this uh, kitchen, you know, just put cement on and smooth it out. As far as painting the cement, that's not a huge priority. A huge priority is to get this covered. See the bathroom, this orphanage number one, by the way. See one of these doors is broken off because the old hinges are rusted. Now I'm going to show you this is a standard. Now for a Filipino bathroom, this is already the average or above average. You got a toilet. This is the kind of toilet they use. They don't use a lid. And then you just fill a bucket with water and pour it in there and flush it. But this is a standard of Filipino. This is above average Filipino bathroom, I'm telling you. But not for the, you know, in the, where wealthy people live. But it's above average for the average Filipino, but see this wood up there, how it's getting ruined because it's not painted or anything. And then these hollow blocks, or they call them here hollow blocks, cinder blocks, they call them in the States. We need to cover this and smooth it and make it more, you know, finished so it's going to last longer. We need to get a new door. The door hinges are ripped off. That's what happens when you got these orphans. And this stuff is just so cheap made. This junk is just plastic anyway. But, uh, you know, if we had the funds, we could buy a more durable door to start with. Anyway, so, see what we're dealing with. You know, I praise the Lord for all the people that donated to help build the orphanages. But, uh, you know, we got to maintain them since PayPal's been cut off, brothers and sisters. You know, the money that we've had coming in is enough to cover just our budget of the food and all that. But, you know, these orf this orphanage we've had for five years. And we got to, you know, we have to maintain it. And, of course, that's a, you know, extra budget, which we haven't been able to have every month. You know, if we had a steady flow of, I don't know, you know, one or two hundred dollars a month extra above our normal expenses, then, you know, through that process, we could slowly fix everything. But, um, you know, it always ends up, I guess, in any kind of a project that you just do it all at one time if you can, you know. So we need to raise the funds to do all the projects we need. I, I think I mentioned it before. I've tried to do a calculation. Here's our van we're going to try to sell. I thought we had a buyer, but not yet. And sell it because it's always breaking down and buy a different vehicle that, that's better quality that won't break down, a different brand. And anyway, see all this? The wood is getting bad because we didn't paint it. See, if we'd invest the money to paint it, now we got to replace, you know, we will have, end up having to replace this wood if we don't get it treated properly. It is, well, you know, it's a waste of you lose the money of building it and everything, plus having to paint it anyway so if we get it painted then it'll be in better shape so we already got some of the screens repaired so we already got the screens repaired. okay so this orphanage number one and uh so i'm going to head over here toward orphanage number two and uh this is still part of orphanage number one now this is now see how we finished this walls better now this is now we made this one a little bit better too because if we have Visitors like brother Terry came here, but he didn't spend the night out here But it was intention that if anybody visits they can stay here if I come here I can stay here if any of you guys ever come you can stay in this uh, In this part of the orphanage we made it a little bit better standard, but still 
we have repairs to do as I've showed you on this wood and stuff there it needs to be fixed now this is a chicken house right here we have chickens they're out right now and then we have some pigs the orphans are taken care of I know some of you are are in a different religion than the the you know the New Testament Christianity and you don't want to eat pork well see I'm not a fan of eating pork for health reasons not because of any kind of a religious reason but anyway, so some of the orphans are not here, but the ones that are here, I've got them in the video. And here I go toward orphanage number two. And right here we see this here thing. It's a, this is called a Bahakubo, they call it. You can go up there and rest. And we built this about three years ago. And, you know, we can go up there when it's really hot, when the orphans can go up there. Or when I, we visit, I go up there and drink coffee. And we plan, you know, and discuss about the orphanages and stuff. And if we have any visitors, they can go there and go up high here's the orphans I'm gonna see the orphans that are here today so I'll get them on video hi. oh maybe I'll turn it this way what's it gonna be like okay say something say hello again say hi, hi. Yeah. okay say God bless or something God, God bless. bless okay how about do you have any I'm gonna give them a challenge do you have any memory verse any Bible verse okay Okay. Okay, speak loud more loudly, please. Okay. John 14, uh, John 15, verse 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay. John 15, verse 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another, that I have loved you. Okay. You did one already? Did you say one? Oh, okay. Revelation 20, Revelation 22, verse 21, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Second Corinthians 13 verse 12, greet one another with an holy kiss. Uh, you guys pick all the short Bible verses, okay, you. Luke 10 verse 5, what and into whatsoever else the interface first be peace to this house. John 10 verse 30, I am the Father of one. Okay, you guys all pick the short Bible verses. That's pretty good. That's pretty wise. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm here at orphanage number two. And like I said, uh, some of the orphans aren't here. It's a Saturday. Some of them, you know, they go to their grandparents, etc. Coming and going. I can never catch them all at one time here. Because we have probably 18 in these two orphanages. And there's not even but about 8 or 10 here now. So this is orphanage inside. See these, I don't know if you guys can see, it's dark in here. These screens are broken out. See, we need to replace these screens, things like this. Now, this one's made a little bit lesser. Uh, we made this one cheaper, but it's cooler with this more of a native look. See, this native look is nice, but, and it's cooler, so I like it, but it doesn't last as long, but it's cheaper than the other orphanage. So we tried an experiment. We made the other orphanage more of an American standard. It lasts longer. But it's hotter, you know, in the Philippines it's so hot. And this one made more of a native look and a natural look. It's much cheaper to build, but it wears out. So I think in the end the cost is about the same. But anyway, as you can see, the construction. It's very cool in here compared to the other house. And this is the kitchen. This is the kitchen area of orphanage number two. Now, I know I videotaped this before. And then, of course, orphanage number two. Now, when I bought this land with my, you know, with my own money before, 2008... My intention was that uh, one day this would be an orphanage, and so that's what we've done. But you know, the house is uh, older, and it needs uh, some work done to it. So these are the bedrooms, like of the orphanage. Now, by American standard, this is really small, which the bedrooms in the Philippines are so small. So in the Philippines, they've got mats, and they put the mats on the floor at night. In the daytime, they pick them up. But this is the room, one of the rooms here in orphanage number two and they've got some awards from the department of education from their awards from school they're on the wall and uh so this is some of their there's one of their mat see these mattresses too 
you know we need the thing about these mattresses they use on the floor you know they get dirty and stuff and they get worn out and we need to buy all new mattresses each one of these mattress pads is probably like 50 or 60 bucks so you know we need to buy more and then it's like two orphans per one so you know we I don't know brothers and sisters the total cost what we need uh, what I had looked at before like I said counting a vehicle oh uh, I think I calculated let's say 30,000 I want to make that a goal to raise $30,000 this year to finish all of this stuff but for you know just for all the mats and all that stuff I guess and the painting around the house repairs of the of this paint here and stuff like that screens that are torn and all that I think for maybe three thousand dollars we can do those or maybe the paint is that's not counting the paint maybe paint for some reason is kind of expensive in the Philippines well when you're dealing with cement brothers and sisters you have to do a lot of prep work with it the walls have to be prepped so when you smooth over this cement like this right here if you're gonna smooth over this cement and make it right now I'm not worried about painting outside but we need to smooth this over so it won't, won't get worn out like here it's been this part we had some extra cement and they kind of smoothed over this part a little bit even they put these lines in there but it's part of the prep work you have to put a few different layers and smooth it all out nicely and then if you want to paint it you got to do all this prep work and sanding and all this and it's that's what's expensive and what takes time so the outdoor painting of the cement i don't think that's very important but it is nice to make it look you know decent but the the main thing is to get this wood all this wood treatment wood trimming tweet uh treated <laughs> it's a tongue twister there uh sound like a tweety bird here let's see <laughs> get all that treated it's a priority so there's no need to just it's just going to go bad it's going to get eaten by worms or destroyed by the heat or whatever if we don't repair it like right here too on this other this is the other part of orphanage number two even there see the wood it's it's just to, it just gets eaten up by the weather and bugs and rain or whatever it got wet even though it's underneath the edge it gets wet and then you know just need to treat it those kind of things brothers and sisters of course this is the swing set that uh house dad number two built and it's still durable even though of course we didn't paint that either but it's made out of stainless steel and the swing set still looks nice the chains are getting kind of rusted but and the seats need to probably are wooden they need to be replaced probably you know these are the kind of things that we need to do brothers and sisters as a matter of fact i wanted to add more equipment you know uh, more more equipment we got the swing set and we had a slide it's broken but i'd like to add more equipment out here too if we have the budget but you know we had to prioritize the food of course the food for the orphans and then the electricity and you know here in the philippines even the public schools they have to have transportation or they have to wear uniforms so every year you know we have to have uniforms for the kids and maintain them and uh you know they have to pay tuition even the public school you have to pay some tuition and all this and uh not much but some and so it all adds up brothers and sisters it all adds up so since paypal you know has been frozen out they don't want to do business with anybody taking money to the Philippines because there's so much money laundering going on in the Philippines so we can't use we haven't been able to use PayPal for a good year now and that's affected us most of you guys love to use PayPal now I just found that clear exchange is going out of business or they got bought out by something called Zila and that takes effect about October the 17th so there'll be no more uh, clear exchange so I had some people that's been given to me through Clear Exchange, which is kind of like PayPal, but it's in America only, and it's bank-to-bank -bank transfer. I've been using that a little bit, but that's going out, and so I have to make a Zill account. And uh, the thing is you have to look and see if you have an account that's on their list. I do not have an account on their list, but in order to give or receive, one of the people has to have an account on the list. I need to make an account at one of their approved banks, and I'll do that when I go to the States next time. And have that set up too that makes it a little bit easier that zeal z-e-l-l-e -L -L -E, uh, zila however you pronounce it and uh but you know paypal is hard to beat but of course you got western union and uh moneygram and all these different kinds of things whatever everybody knows that's been watching my videos since i've been making videos for six years i never 
you know, really asked about money. Uh, made video reports from the orphanages, and you guys all know that who watch me. And I ask for your prayers. And uh, the biggest thing I'd ask you guys to pray for is that, you know, that we would have all the funds to do everything we need to do that the Lord would have us do. Maintain this commitment we have to the orphans. Maintain these orphanages. And then, you know, because we, we've committed to, to this work. The Lord had called us for the orphanages. He got the three orphanages and that we'd finish it. And then, and I just say again, those of you who are watching this, you can, you can get what I'm saying. It still never ceases to amaze me how you can make a video about the rapture and thousands of people watch it. When I post this video, be lucky if two or three hundred people would watch it. People are have wax cold, brothers and sisters. Their heart is about what the Bible says in the last days. People are lovers of themselves, and uh, they want to debate doctrines with people on YouTube and not even consider, you know, the actual work of the church. The work of the church and some of the works of the church is, as James said, uh, perfect religion is to keep yourself spotted from spotless from the world, and to take care of widows and orphans. Right there in the book of James. So, you know, it's part of the job of the church is to uh, provide for the poor, and uh, help poor people with the gospel, and with food too. It's as it says in the books of James. Some people, you know, who like to justify themselves about money. They will say, oh, well, he's talking about poor in spirit only, you know, just giving people the gospel. But uh, James said, you know, uh, if someone says, you know, I'm hungry and you say to them, be thou filled in Jesus name, you know, say you just pray for them to be full. You know, you're no different than a, than a hypocrite because, you know, you should give them the actual food that they need and pray for them. So that's already covered in, in the word of God in the New Testament. So anyway, brothers and sisters, ask for your prayers that we can meet all the needs. I'll make a video from Orphanage Number 3 tonight. I'll be spending the night there. Uh, it's about two hours from here. And I'm right now I'm two hours away from where I started at, where I live at. So, you know, spread out. And, uh, of course, I just posted a video of some of the pictures from the feeding programs just the other day. So I'll be posting this. And I just ask for your fervent prayer because some people, you know, they, they don't have any means to help. And so I ask for your fervent prayer. You know, God is the one that provides through people. And any way God sees fit or any way God wants to do it, He provides for us. So God is our source, but He uses people. So I ask you to pray. You know, God's going to make a way. He's going to move the hearts of the right people that we can uh, do all the work we need to do and get our everything repaired and get our, you know, our uh, uh, budget full and get our... Uh, you know, because in the past, whenever we had extra money, we also went and we, we, we uh, loaned money against coconut farms. And then the interest off of those loans is some of the coconuts. And then at the end, they give you back your money after five years. So we've done that. And then we've, you know, since PayPal went out, we've had to use those backup sources. We've already been using those and depleting our backup funds. And so, you know, uh, you know, we cannot not feed these kids. And then we have the feeding programs. We feed about approximately 1,000 kids a week there through churches of 15 or 16 uh, feeding sites that we do. And then we do like a vacation Bible school and all these sites. And, you know, we can't, you know, when I see the pictures of the kids, if you go look at those pictures of the feeding programs we do and the Bible teaching we do to the poor street kids and then the orphanages, you know, you can't say no. You know, once we've committed to it, and I just can't say no, as long as I'm alive, I can't say no to the to the orphans or to the, the children that we feed. And so I know that God's going to make a way. And so I'm just making all you guys aware of it and asking for your prayers. And then there's some of you who give, and, and a, some people have given faithfully since I started the ministry, a few people. Many people have committed, <laughs> they started, and then they stopped, you know. Uh, but some people, praise the Lord, a few have, have been given steadily the whole time. And, uh, you know, uh, that, that, that says something about people, about their stability, about their steadfastness, you know, and their faithfulness to the Lord. It says something about that. I should even make videos about that. You know, we it's a fruit of steadfastness in the Lord. So I want to thank everyone that's ever helped Joshua's ministry, of course. But, you know, it's for the Lord. It's not for me. It's for the Lord. And uh, just like me, you know, I bought this land from my own money. Started the first orphanages out of my own money. Then God made a way, you know, when I didn't have enough of my own money, then God provided for other people to help so we could do more and more and more. You know, it multiplied what I was doing. So praise God for that.
So God bless all those who have given, all those who have prayed for the ministry. God bless you all, brothers and sisters. Have a blessed day.